Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Your Child is Smarter Than You Think by Dr. Wanda Draper bridges the gap between how children think and learn and how they feel and behave. Dr. Draper presents a whole child approach to articulate a child's developmental relationship to behavior and learning. Based on 30 years of experiences with children, parents, and teachers, she suggests effective ways to help children achieve success in school and life, offering insights about the difference between natural and problem behavior and what to do about it. Wanda Draper, Ph.D., Professor Emeritus of Human Development in the College of Medicine, University of Oklahoma Science Center, where she taught behavioral science to physicians in their psychiatry residency programs for 20 years. Dr. Draper has consulted national, internationally on child development and parent education programs. As an expert witness, she's testified in over 100 capital murder trials and child custody cases about the relationship between childhood development and adulthood consequences. She studied at Texas Women's University with additional studies at Harvard University and in Geneva, Switzerland. The author of 17 books appeared on television, including The Oprah Winfrey Show, quoted in numerous publications, USA Today, CNN News, and many more, Dr. Wanda Draper author of Your Child is Smarter Than You Think, Unleashing Your Child's Unlimited Potential, is our special guest on This Week in America. Dr. Draper, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to have you with us on the show. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. What a distinguished career and so many families and children that you've helped over the course of that career and continue to do it. Let's talk specifically about the book and the inspiration for the book, Your Child is Smarter Than You Think. Where did this concept come? What was the motivation for writing this book? I had so many parents who would come to me and say, uh, this is the problem my child is having. What in the world can I do? And I said, well, first of all, just keep in mind that your child is behaving this way because your child is smarter than you think. <laughs> and I said that so many times with so many parents of various ages that finally I decided, why don't I write a book about this? <laughs> and so this book has been really a highlight for me of my entire career because it, uh, it gives all these snippets of what we can do to enjoy living with children and at the same time uh, help them to become whole and wonderful, loving children. And so... Uh, it, it's been the book itself is an inspiration for me, and I have learned so much from so many children, and from working with parents and and adults, teachers and students. And so, this book is one of my own personal prizes. It's a prized possession for me, and I just want to share it with the world. Well, you know, it's interesting because the book is so well laid out. You cover a lot of ground. You do it thoroughly. You cover it in a way that it's easy to follow for us parents as we try to, uh, try to, to jump into this parent-child relationship and make sure we're doing everything properly to give our child the, the best opportunity. Well, and then let's talk about that. What is the impact of the parent-child relationship on the child's development? How much of his development, her development, depends on the relationship we have with them? Well, it's, a, it's the greatest part. It is the greatest uh, uh, impact on a child. Uh, comes from the interaction, the relationship between the parent and child. Uh, nothing, nothing is more important than that relationship, and we can call it bonding, attachment, connections, but that early, especially beginning in the early first day, first 18 months of life, getting a pattern of being close to one's child um, is paramount to helping that child feel very, very much accepted and admired, loved, cherished in the family. And so the parent-child attachment is what gives a child what we call a secure base. It's It helps a child be able to explore and learn 
without hesitation because a child does not have to think, you know, who cares about me? What's going to happen to me next? Who will be there when I get home, etc.? Depending on the age of the child, that parent-child attachment is by far the most important part of a child's life. And the first five to ten years of life will set the stage for all the rest to come. There is no question about it. I saw that over and over with these many court cases that I have worked on. It's amazing how those first years of life help to shape adult behavior. That is so fascinating because sometimes we think with with little babies that they don't recognize me. I don't think I'm not sure that we're you know I'm 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 trying to bond, but I, I'm not sure that I'm able to bond. Talk about those first eighteen months again, because if I understand what you're saying, those those really are crucial eighteen months. Yes, and isn't it interesting that nature has made it possible for the parent to be very close to the child? In fact, the child is dependent on the parent, the adult, for everything during those first 18 months. Uh, Unlike many animals in in our world, they can get up and move and go and take care of their needs (laughs) almost immediately after they're born, but not so with a baby. And I think that is wonderful because that ties the parent and the child. It ties them together in a very special way. And uh, babies are very sensitive, and they are keen to the smell and scent of their parents uh, and to the taste of their first nourishment. And it's amazing because they know the difference very early on between their own parents and some other adults. And they can also adapt to other adults, especially those who are caring for them, but it is not the same as their very own parents. There's a certain scent about that parent that that baby tunes into and the touch. And, of course, we know that during those very, very early months and years that the brain is stimulated most by the parent's touch, by their eye contact, and by their voice. Those three factors impact that brain more than any other single factors. Let's, so those early months are critical. Well, let's flip that and talk from the parent standpoint. As I think back on our younger children growing up, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm wondering if, if this bond is working, and I think back on that to see them smile, to see them laugh, to see them roll over in the crib maybe for the first time. I'm thinking this is a, an amazing bonding experience as well for the parent, for the parent, during that 18 months. Absolutely. And in fact, it is the infant who first stimulates the parent. And when that baby looks at that parent, there is no way that parent isn't going to smile and cuddle and coo and talk with that baby. And the baby does not have to have any language skills to know the voice of the parent. And so the parents are stimulated as much by the baby uh, as the other way around. And we know this from some children who unfortunately are born lacking some of their developmental components. And uh, when they don't respond to the parent, sometimes parents don't know what to do, so they back off. Um, So when you respond to your own child, you're going to make a lifelong connection there. It it is absolutely incredible to watch this and to hear parents talk about it. You know, what, what a fabulous experience to watch your baby grow and develop. It, it's, it's incredible. And that young, that first 18 months, I found they, they laughed at my jokes. So I have no idea if they heard me, but they laughed at my jokes. So that was rewarding from a, uh, a parent standpoint <laughs> as well. The book is Your Child is Smarter Than You Think, Unleashing Your Child's Unlimited Potential by Dr. Wanda Draper. Dr. Draper, by the way, has earned the prestigious Regents Award of Excellence in Teaching at the University of Oklahoma and the Award for Outstanding Professional Service from the Oklahoma Psychological Association. 
let's talk about, and this is not fair because we don't have four hours to talk about it, but preparing children to live meaningful lives in such a diverse global society that we have today, being bombarded, our children, their minds, behavior. Let's talk about how we can prepare them in today's society. And I'm sure this has changed dramatically over the last even couple decades. That's right. It, it has. And I think one of the greatest things we need to do is to help that child sense. Without, you don't have to even say very much, but just sense that the parent really cares about this child. And they are going to have lots of fears. Uh, fears are one of the most uh, haunting things for a child because they get the idea of fear from a lot of places, as we all know, because we get fears from one another, especially now when we have a certain kind of a, a health crisis before us. But yes. children not only pick up on what is said about fears, but they sense it in their own parents. And, and they don't know how to handle that. They don't know what to do. And so we need to help children let go of their fears as much as we can by assuring them that whatever is going on is not going to happen to them. And uh, I've had people say, but you can't guarantee that. No, we don't guarantee anything to anyone. But with a child, you do talk with them as though nothing will ever happen to them. I will be here for you. Uh, when you are worried about something, come and tell me. It's okay. And if you get upset or angry, that's okay. And there's a time for you to cry and even scream if you need to. And I'm not going to be upset with you because I love you. I want to help you. You need to come and talk with me about it. And then you might, you know, give them some examples and use their toys, their dolls. Their, I use the Raggedy Andy uh, notion with many children. They love it. They'll talk to that rag doll sometime before they'll talk to the parent and right there with them. And they'll talk to the rag doll. Uh, it's a little less threatening, I think. So we need to play with children a lot. And that's one way we can bridge these cultures you know, play is a universal language. Uh, play brings children together, and they don't care what ethnic backgrounds they are among. They enjoy playing. It's an opportunity to express themselves through their body movements, through, through song, through play, depending on their ages, of course. But play will bring children together. And as we've noticed in some of the uh, international games, such as the Olympics, uh, and then later as children grow into adulthood, look what happens with the astronauts and the cosmonauts and how they have to work together. And so children start all of this early in their lives by playing. So I would say that play with your child, enjoy your child. You know it. Parents who play with their children the first three years of life do not have to teach them anything. They will be free to learn, and when they start to school, they will move right on at their own pace as fast as they can because they're free to learn. They don't have to worry. And um, it, play is the answer here in bridging these gaps. So much of this information and much more in Dr. Draper's book, Your Child is Smarter Than You Think, Unleashing Your Child's Unlimited Potential. Dr. Draper's website is wandadraper.com. We'll have this on our website so you can go directly link there if you're traveling and, and can't remember all of this. Of course, the book's available at Amazon as well. The title, Your Child is Smarter Than You Think. That's easy to remember, and you can find that and uh, get all the information uh, at Amazon and, of course, at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Talk a little bit about, and you address this in the book, we want our, our child to be an achiever, to be successful. How do we make a child a super achiever compared to a slacker, which is what we don't want to do? Okay, here again, I think that early attachment that you mentioned in the beginning is one of the keys. When uh, children know their parents uh, really care about them, uh, they'll do almost anything for them. 
Now, for example, when a child comes home, let's say second grade or so, comes home and they uh, had some kind of a, a writing experience in school and they bring it home, look, look, Mom, look what I did. And she says, well, I'm busy right now. Just put it there and I will look at it as soon as I finish this. Okay, can you imagine that child who worked so hard on that paper and now mom says, just put it aside, I'll look at it later? Or a sixth grader comes in and says, Dad, you know what? I had a spelling test today and I only missed four words. And he says, well, how come you missed those four words? You knew them last night. Imagine the difference in that statement and one where he says, well, you know what, you got 16 of those correct. That's absolutely wonderful. Now, maybe we can work on those other four. I can help you with that, or maybe you can, you know, you can talk with me about those. Yes. When a child comes home with something from school, the parent who can drop everything, even if it's momentarily, to look at it is a powerful message to the child that you are the most important person in my life. And that that will move the child toward becoming an achiever. Achievement motivation is what carries these children through school. The slacker is the one who feels like nobody really cares. Who cares if I make good grades or not? My parents are fighting all the time. They don't even notice that I come home. I mean, can you see the difference in that? Uh, Children stimulate us to become better parents and better adults. If we just look at life through their eyes and where they're coming from, they will teach us a lot about living. Such great information from Dr. Draper in her book, Your Child is Smarter Than You Think, Unleashing Your Child's Unlimited Potential, book available at uh, our website, wandadraper.com. Of course, Amazon, the usual places. Time is going by so quickly. I want to focus on technology here for a second. Uh, Some people will say, boy, this is helping. It makes it easier than ever in assisting a child in school, assisting a child in the learning process. Others say, I think sometimes it gets in the way. How do we incorporate technology in the the learning habits of our child? Well, it's a balancing act, and we, we need to be very judicious about it because it is a wonderful technology. I mean, it, it has given us so much Uh, in the last couple of decades, and in the future it will even be greater. And we need to help children learn how to balance technology with their own skills and their own potential for using their brain. Their brain is actually more powerful than any of those technologies they may have in their hands, more so than any. And we know that from science, and we, we know that from experience. So we have to be careful about using technology as a babysitter or as something that occupies the child's time when we're busy. Um, Whenever possible, using the technology together is really great. (laughs) There are some parents who ask their young children how to do something on the computer because the children know more than the adult does. Yes, I've done that before myself, yes. (laughs) So, but we do, we must, we must balance that out. Uh, too much of anything is not good. And uh, I think in my book I use a, a, a comment about some children have EMS, meaning escape mechanism syndrome. Sometimes if things get kind of rough and they don't want to deal with it, they just escape to their technology and they hide in the technology or if social situations get too tight for them, they just pick up their, um, you know, their iPads, et cetera, and get lost in them, and they don't have to develop their social skills. We need those social skills, and how we use that technology is going to be the difference between a slacker and an achiever. Uh, A slacker may be able to use that technology much better even than the achiever, but it's the balance that we need. And there are times when the adult has to say, I'm sorry, but this is not the time you know, for you to use your technology. This is a time for us to do some things together. So uh, sometimes a parent just has to be strong. 
I want to go back for a second to, you mentioned play and how important that is. And so often I think as a parent, it's like, you're not going to go out and play soccer with the neighbor kids until all of your homework is done. Talk about the importance of play. And, and I think what you're saying is sometimes the play is maybe as important as doing the homework. Well, it is, and even though that homework has to be done because you're expected to have it in school and so forth, again, there's some balance there, but play is how children learn to negotiate socially. Uh, Play is the way it is not threatening, and therefore there's no expected outcome other than respect, of course, but play uh, frees the child to use a a mode of thinking that may not come to bear in the classroom, but in the form of play, children find new ways of thinking, new ways of solving problems. And it's amazing to to watch them and to listen to them. I had a little uh, four-year-old girl, and one of the residents asked, or, you know, if the sun comes up over there in the east and it goes down over there in the west, they were on the playground. Now, how does that happen? And she said, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. And he said, what do you mean? She said, well, the sun doesn't move. The earth revolves around the sun. And he said, that's right. Did somebody teach you that? No. I just know it. Well, how do you know it? Because I can hear it. You can hear the earth going around the sun. Yes, I can hear it. How can you hear it? And she said, I have very good ear sight. (laughs) When we listen to children, we see how they're learning. And when they're free on the playground, one little boy just put out his hand and he touched the tree and he began to whisper to the tree. Now, those may seem very simple and unimportant, but they're not. They're very important. They allow children to be a part of the world in a very natural way. But play is a very good social setting in which to negotiate and problem solve, both by themselves and with other children. And even if they don't agree, even if they get into some squabbles and all, that's a wonderful way for them to learn how to get along. I got about a minute left. I have no idea where the time is gone. And I'd like to mention uh, briefly here two of the books, one you're working on, one is your newest book. Let's talk about, is there a nanny in the house? That is that now available? Uh, it will be in just a matter of days or weeks. Okay. It's in the galley form now to go, and I can hardly wait because... Uh, for years, I have uh, done some work with nannies, professional uh, nannies, who were studying to be professional nannies. It, it's a wonderful career, and we know that many parents have to work. So yes. if they have to have a nanny, let's have a professional nanny. And this book is aimed at both the uh, parents and the nanny. And it's a partnership, and I think that anyone you know, engaged in being a nanny uh, will really benefit from this book. I I developed that when I was teaching nannies at night school uh, several years ago, and uh, it's very practical, and I think they'll find it's a a guide that all parents and nannies need when they work together for the well-being of their children. So, Another uh, book you're working on, Mentoring to Make a Difference, How Children Benefit from, uh, from School Mentoring. And I'm looking forward to that, too. Such insight, uh, all of the years that you bring in listening to children, to parents, and to teachers, all of that insight in, in Dr. Draper's books. The book we talked about on the program today specifically is Your Child is Smarter Than You Think, Unleashing Your Child's Unlimited Potential. Books available, of course, at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, the usual places. You can find information at Dr. Draper's website, which is WandaDraper, D-R-A-P-E-R.com. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on to uh, to all of those and get information. Dr. Draper, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. We've only touched the surface uh, surface of all of the the great information you've got in your books, including your, Your Child is Smarter Than You Think. Thank you for being with us on the program today. 
Oh, I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Look forward to doing it again. It's been a pleasure. Wanda Draper, author of Your Child is Smarter Than You Think. You'll find it, of course, at Amazon. Link on by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.